Hi everyone and welcome to Norwegian Modeling Bench. I am Kenneth and uh, this is the first video in the build log of uh, the USS Enterprise CV6. Um, I must say I just love the history behind this ship in the sense of the guys that really made an effort and a big contribution to the Second World War in the Pacific. They made a huge difference. And I think this ship, when reading the history, just uh, amazes me how this actually contributed. And of course, the people on it. So uh, in that sense, this is a tribute to all those heroes that served on the ship. Um, so this is the first uh, video as mentioned, I'm concentrating on the hull and uh, you will see all the steps that I took to come to this uh, finish here. I hope that uh, you like uh, the video and that you would like to continue following me. Uh, please uh, comment if you would like to because I'm not really sure if I am going to uh, do this build completely off camera or uh, or not but that really depends on the feedback that I get so please enjoy bye for now yes so then it's time to look at uh, the hull of the uh, enterprise um, there are a couple of things that I want to do, uh, but I will do the same thing that I did for the Admiral Graf Spee, so I will put it in a sea base. So I'm not too worried about anything below the waterline. Uh, but if we take a look at the hull itself, uh, there are some things missing. The most notably is, of course, the total lack of any hull plating so we'll come back a bit more on that part otherwise i also have seen from uh, the pictures that there really should be two rows of uh, portholes um, i won't go into that detail because i think that the main focus of this hull is going to be um, what's on top the superstructure the aircrafts and so on um, but uh, this part really needs to be fixed. Uh, of course, when you look at this from the side, it's not going to be a big problem, but uh, these windows are uh, more ellipses than uh, circles. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to drill out all the portholes. I'm going to remove the eyebrows from uh, from the plastic kit and replace them with uh, the KA provided portholes. Um, otherwise, of course, there are some minor mold lines. Um, this might be just in the area that needs to be fixed up. But that's not a big problem, I think. Uh, then, of course, we have the, the bow area, which isn't really uh, according to the prototype. But then again, there is a lot of... Uh, uh, what should you call it, wrong things about this hull when, when looking at, um, at the prototype. So I think I will actually just let that be. That's going to be a massive job anyway. And as I said, uh, I think that the main focus will be on the things happening on top of, of the hull itself. And thinking that we will have the waterline here as well, it doesn't really makes sense to put that much effort into um, to uh, restructuring the, the shape of the hull. In terms of uh, reference material, I have um, gotten two books. So this one uh, from uh, 
David Doyle. And uh, then I also got the big E. This was really hard to get. Uh, so, I, but I got the used one from uh, from Amazon, from a store in the UK. So actually, not too bad of a price, around um, 80, 90 uh, euros. Um, and this really has a lot of history of the ship itself. And when I were thinking of the hull and looking at photos of the hull, it made me think, how can I best represent uh, the hull lines or the plating lines? And uh, when I've seen on different, um, at least one pre-50 models, scale models, uh, they are a bit exaggerated and they really don't represent how the plating was. So when I saw this photo, that really uh, made a big difference because here we can see that the, uh, the platings are uh, on top of each other and uh, on uh, on the 1350 scale models it, it looks like it's more like a riveted uh, type of uh, plating I'm not sure what it's called but same as on titanic where you have uh, more like an overlapping and then uh, a, a very um, um, visible ridge line so to say uh, but from this picture it you can easily see that the platings are on top of each other. I guess these are welded. And the same you can see very easily on this uh, picture over here uh, that there is a, a weld line. Uh, but these are not that uh, type of a weld line. So I think that I will be scribing these. So from the bottom you can see here there's a shadow. So. Uh, the scribe line needs to be from from bottom to um, to top, uh, and um, the same goes with uh, you know, this line, this line, and this line on top. And here it's not that visible, and um, there are of course a couple of photos in 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 this book as well that. Um, Okay, so then I found the correct picture that I was uh, trying to refer to. So um, from this picture, we can see the lines going here and here and the same here. But the, on these pictures, it looks a much more exaggerated than uh, what I would like to do. So I'm thinking scribing a line of point... Uh, one to one and a half uh, millimeter it's going to be uh, perfectly fine um, so that's what I'm going to do in terms of um, of the whole plating so then it's time to um, talk a bit about colors so uh, I've seen a lot of discussions going on um, and trying to find figure out which color scheme was used on uh, on the USS Enterprise. So I'm going to go for a midway version. And according to uh, at least some public records, it looked like it was measure 11. But as far as I have seen from other sources, it was actually measure 21 so that means going with uh, 5 and navy blue so all vertical uh, uh, surfaces were in navy blue and then deck blue on uh, on steel deck and wooden deck um, well at least kind of a steel, a steel blue uh, when looking at um, at the wooden deck, uh, it's saying it should be similar. Uh, and then for the anti-fouling, I'm going for the Norfolk uh, 65 uh, anti-fouling red. So also in discussions with the Jeff Hearn at um, 
scale colors. Uh, he had a lot of sources also saying that measure 21 was uh, the correct scheme for, for the midway version. So yeah, let's move ahead and uh, work on the hull, drilling out portholes, um, then uh, adding the photo etch around the portholes. And I will also do the scribe, of course, and um, then I need to take a look at which degaussing cables I want to use. If I'm going to use the KA one or, um, or the Pontos one. Okay, moving on then with some work. Okay, so then it's time to start with the drilling out the portholes. Uh, of course, you can use a regular vise. Uh, I think that's what it's called at least. Um, but uh, for these um, long projects with a lot of drilling, I am definitely going for um, this electrical hand drill. Uh, this is made uh, from uh, Tamiya, uh, which I can definitely recommend. It is actually a build project in itself, so that was kind of fun when, when receiving it. Uh, so then it's just getting on with the tedious work of uh, drilling out the holes. Uh, really nothing more to say about that one. Trying to center it and just drill on. And uh, since I'm going to use the photo etch portholes from the KA kit, I'm not too worried about uh, not getting it perfect in this round. And of course, uh, afterwards, I will remove the eyebrows with a regular um, X-Acto knife. That was what I was trying to get at. And yeah, and the drill is a 2.0 millimeter drill. So first mistake, I drilled out too big of a hole. As you can see here, so I switched to a 1.8 millimeter. I don't think it will matter much uh, since I'm adding the um, scuttles, the PE scuttles. Uh, so um, I will check that afterwards. Otherwise, I will need to, of course, fill the ho holes that I made and um, start all over again with those three. Uh, but yeah, moving on. Of course, I couldn't wait, so I ne needed to check this one immediately. So uh, it will uh, cover my mistake. And um, I will also test now uh, with the oval or the ellipsis uh, uh, portholes in, uh, in the bow area and, and see if I need to fill that in or if the PE will cover up the... Um, the unwanted shape, so to say. But otherwise, I think this looks much better than these uh, attempts of eyebrows on the portholes. Um, yeah. Okay, as you can see, the PE matches um, the porthole very nicely. So actually, I only need to drill out the hole in the lower part of the uh, oval or the ellipsis and uh, the PE will cover the rest of it. So that was uh, lucky. Uh, so then I'm moving along, going to drill out all the portholes and um, then starting sanding down the areas that require uh, some sanding. Some hours later, uh, I have then completed uh, the drill out of all the portholes. Um, I've also embossed or scribed the panel lines. I'm only going to uh, scribe the horizontal lines, not vertical lines. Uh, I've seen pictures and those are not really visible in any of the, the ones that I have seen at least. 
So what I did was using this uh, special tape using uh, you, uh, that you need to use for embossing. So it's um, a bit tougher than uh, ordinary masking tape, which uh, you can then use a, a scriber to follow the line. Uh, and then it's at least a bit easier than if you're going freehand. So I did that from below, as I said, uh, when looking at reference photos. Um, so that's why you might see that there, it is um, a bevel, so to say, on the lower and uh, or lower side of the panel. Yes. And um, on the aft, I have also opened up the door at the end. Uh, and there is a photo etch part from um, Pontus, at least, going in here, showing uh, at least a kind of an obstacle so you can't uh, go out. And um, also, then we have the degaussing cables, which we need to look at afterwards. We have three different options there. And then, of course, also the nameplate that goes on the stern. So let's take a look at the degaussing cables. So here we have the degaussing options. Um, first one is what we have supplied in the kit. So uh, this is just a regular brass wire and um, well, it is what it is. I guess uh, it might do the, the, the job, but uh, I think uh, it will it won't it will be very tricky to make it uh, look good. So I am definitely not going for that one, but if you are, good luck. And then we have the KA um, provided the gaussing cables on uh, sheet A and on uh, sheet set from Pontos. And um, when I have looked at uh, photos of, um, of the actual cables, uh, I think that the Pontos ones are definitely closer to... Uh, how they actually looked. You have the curves here and the endpoints uh, are definitely a lot better um, on, on, on the Pontos ones, I think at least. Uh, when it comes to scale, I'm actually not sure, but KA might actually be uh, more uh, to scale than the Pontos ones. Um, but since they are not really shaped as they were historically, they these were cables. They weren't uh, uh, like fixed or anything with plates. Uh, these are definitely a lot more believable in that regard. So yes, I will go for the Pontus one in this case. So probably a gazillion ways of, of adding these. Um, I think it's uh, a good idea to just put some glue on the lower side and then I can place it and position it and then add some more thin glue afterwards uh, when the scuttle is in place. So a bit on the lower side then trying to positioning it. There we go. Then some thin glue on the toothpick and then pressing it in place. So then all the portholes have gotten their scuttles 
Um, and um, I failed to mention one thing, and that is uh, on the bow area, we have these balconies, or uh, uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, the Pontos instructions suggests removing these. Uh, but uh, when I've looked at um, historical images, pictures, I can't see that they were removed at any point in time. The only thing that I saw was that the shape is, uh, is not entirely correct, but I will leave it as is. Um, another thing is that I drilled out a hole in the aft uh so i can um so just expanding on the one for the rudder uh here uh so i can get some wiring and lighting because i want lighting in the hangar so then the next thing is to work on the degaussing cables when attaching the uh the gaussing cables um i am going to use some e6000 uh so um this one um, and this is a um, flexible uh, glue so it gives you a bit more time to uh, adjust the cables and, and uh, position them properly and then I will use some uh, thin CA to um, to properly attach them uh, on the entire length uh, so that is important so it doesn't pop off or um, or you get gaps uh, in different areas. So that is my next step. Then the degaussing cable is in place and um, the same with the nameplate on the stern. So the next thing for me now to do is um, to prime it. I've already given it a wash in uh, rubbing alcohol uh, so then uh, it's priming and starting with uh, navy blue after priming. I will also give uh, the um, plating lines a bit of black uh, before going forward with the navy blue. So to give it a bit of shading in those areas. Okay, so then I have uh, painted the first color, so that is uh, US Navy 5 and Navy Blue. I've used uh, scale colors as I mentioned before, and uh, I've also done some modulation, so blending in a bit of uh, white in uh, different batches, so it won't get too flat, of course. Uh, more of uh, life in the color will come when I'm going to work on uh, the weathering. Uh, so I think this is uh, looking okay. So I will let the color cure for 24 hours before I am going to apply the black uh, line in the uh, on the waterline. Um, so then it's going to be just a regular dull black, uh, also from scale colors. So uh, hopefully that will work out well. So let's see how this pans out. So then I've masked off the, uh, the top of the waterline. So painting black below uh, at the aft or the stern um, I have used a more flexible um, masking tape uh, to get the curves uh, correct otherwise uh, of course uh, this is Tamiya tape I would never put any other tape on top of, uh, of paint but that's just my uh, point of view at least so then I'm going ahead and painting the black line then the black line has been uh, added and uh, I am going to let this dry for a couple of hours before I will mask it off and um, I will just uh, mask it off with a 
masking tape with appropriate width and then applying the anti-fouling. And of course, uh, some might say, oh, you have been sloppy not doing the rudders or uh, propellers and so on. Uh, but as I've said before, I'm going to put this in a uh, C base as I did with the Admiral Graf Spee. And um, then you won't see those details anyway. So why put a lot of effort into something you won't see? That's at least my point of view. Then the black line has been um, masked off. Uh, I've used a six millimeter uh, masking tape. So overlapping uh, approximately a mil on the previous masking tape. So now applying the anti-fouling red. Then the anti-fouling is applied. Uh, so I have used uh, this, um, let me see, there you can see it. Uh, US Navy Norfolk uh, 65 anti-fouling red from Scale Colors. Looks uh, a much um, lighter in the bottle, so keep that in mind if you're using these. They darken when they dry. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's it for the hull uh, at this point in time. I am fairly happy with the colors. Uh, well, they are historically correct. I don't doubt that. The only thing for me, at least, uh, when you also see at uh, the close-ups here, uh, is uh, I think it looks like uh, kind of a kid toy uh, when it comes to uh, the blue color. Uh, but I guess it is what it is. It's um, what was uh, part of the measure at that point in time. I, I also guess that the, this is a good camouflage when uh, being at sea, which of course is the purpose, not for the ship to look good. Uh, so the next um, thing coming up now is working on uh, the structure on the bow. And um, let's see how that will, uh, will go. Otherwise, this uh, I think concludes the hull uh, video, at least for this build. Uh, so I hope that you uh, enjoyed. Uh, please give me any comments and feedbacks if you would like to. And let's see if I will, uh, will continue creating videos from this build. So keep safe, everyone. Bye now.